What's up YouTube? The Real Mud Dog here. And today we are going to be doing a 500 mile review on the 2017 Yamaha FZ10. Now, let me start out by saying that if Zeus was a motorcycle and Pamela Anderson was also a motorcycle and they got it on, this is the love child that would pop out, okay? This thing is absolutely a sexy beast. Um, you know, so what do we know about the bike? Okay. R1, naked, upright seating. Okay. Start with the belly of the beast right here. So, this is an R1 motor. Obviously, a cross plane crankshaft, uh, CP4. What they did was run in a different camshaft. Okay. Lowered the compression. Took all the titanium out of the motor, put steel in there, okay? And all the fasteners and everything around the motor are all steel. They're not uh, magnesium or titanium, whatever the hell they are on the R1. Um, you're going to lose little top end revs. This red line's at 12.2, I believe, and the R1's up at 14.2. But, um, you know, obviously retuned for mid-range torque. Um, but... So far, there has been no problems with this thing pulling all the way to the top end. It's an absolute beast. No lack of power with this bike. Um, like I said, it has a really fat mid-range, and it pulls all the way to the top. So, no problems with the motor so far. Um, clutch. Assisted slipper clutch. Okay, I think on the FZ09, they claim a 20% lighter clutch pull. Um... This clutch is pretty light. It's not bad. I have no complaints with the clutch. It is definitely a lot smoother and more forgiving than a uh, Super Sport as far as the R1 or CBR or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. Um, a lot more forgiving, a lot more um, feel, better feel for the road. Um, it's not very grabby. Kind of just comes on nice and soft. So, excuse me, no complaints with the clutch. Okay, besides that, trans feels tight, okay, shifts good. Uh, when I first got the bike, I was coming into neutral a little bit, going from first to second. Uh, it's a new bike, trans got to break in, everything's got to get broken in. Haven't had a problem really since. And uh, the shifter feels tight, you know, you can feel it when it clicks into gear, there's no sloppiness um, in, in the trans at all, so that's good. Um, R1 chassis, okay same chassis as the r1 runs so pretty much same chassis same motor obviously tuned down bars upright seating position very comfortable okay this is not a super sport this is more of can almost be classified as a sport touring you can definitely tour with it the uh the height that the bars are at right now you're not very hunched over pretty much sitting straight up and down so very comfortable for long rides i have a long commute to work um, about 100 miles round trip so for me this is perfect you're not gonna be uncomfortable on it so don't worry about that okay so let's get into the biggest problem on the bike uh, not a problem but obviously this right here okay I've had the bike for five days I did a lot of riding in the first two days and this seat is gonna have your backside looking like a baboon's ass after it eats Taco Bell. Okay, it's gonna tear you up. You gotta take this seat, throw it in the fucking dumpster, okay? And get the comfort seat from Yamaha for $340, or if Corbin, Mustang, whoever makes an aftermarket seat, um, you know, in the future when they come out with something, definitely pick one up. If you wanna run the stock seat, you're gonna have to buy stock in Gold Bond or some sort of ass cream because it's gonna tear you up. Okay, so that's got to go. But the only good thing about the stock seat is this thing right here, this little hump. Okay, it looks stupid, but it actually does work when uh, when you're hunched down on the highway, you're in a tuck, and you're under load. It does hold your ass into place. So that is a good thing. But get a new seat because you're not going to like it, trust me. Electronics. So far, everything has worked perfectly. Um, 
ABS standard obviously works very well. Okay, I've tried it out. I haven't locked the front tire up yet. I've been really hard on the rear, locked it up. Okay, ABS works great. Um, so no complaints with the ABS so far. Not intrusive. It, it's not gonna, you know, um, it, it's not gonna throw you off going to a corner or something like that if you're really having the brakes. It actually has a very good feel, okay? Throttle modes, you know what these are right here. Yamaha's D mode, standard, um, standard, A, and B mode. Okay, in northern New Jersey, where I live, we have a lot of tight corners. Okay, um, the throttle is snatchy. Okay, even though Yamaha's claimed to fix it, this bike has, it, it has a lot of power, uh, as we know. And when you're taking corners in first and second gear on this bike, A and B, you can maybe swing A, but B is kind of out of the question unless you have a super light throttle hand and you're and you're really good with it. Um, I've been riding for quite some time and I only have 500 miles on the bike, so maybe in a couple thousand miles I'll be more, um, you know, more enticed to use it at a slower speed. But as far as like cornering first, second gear, maybe even third, I rock standard mode. It's super smooth, no problems at all. Um, so standard's the way to go for tight corners around town, whatever. I don't mind turning the throttle another quarter inch to get into power. Not a problem. You're on the highway, B mode, it's great. You know, you're, do, you're doing highway speeds. Don't worry about the snatchy throttle because you're, you're, you're moving already. So it don't matter. If you're in high speed turns, 70, you know, to 110, whatever it may be, A and B mode, I haven't found to be a problem, okay? Some long sweepers, high speed sweepers, it's okay for, but tight turns I, I right now I'm not using the B mode uh, I've tried all of them so I rock standard around town um, traction control obviously we got three most intrusive okay two is the middle one is least intrusive and then you hold down on the toggle up here traction control turns off okay everyone knows what that does there three your know, highest setting won't leave the, the front wheel won't leave the ground so pretty much has wheelie control in it too, okay? Crack on the throttle, as soon as the front tire lifts. We got these speed sensors, okay? Right here that run down the brake line. Come to right here, sorry about that. Okay, these speed sensors are gonna work with your ABS and everything. Keep this thing on the ground if you want it to. Uh, I ride on traction control too mostly. Lets you get the front wheel straight up in the air. Okay, it's not intrusive, but if your tire breaks loose, it will kick in, okay? I haven't really rode on one yet, and I haven't turned it off yet, so I don't know what that's like. Best thing so far on this bike, cruise control. Never had it on a bike before, and I have to say that it is a lifesaver for commuting, and this cruise control works very well, okay? Doing a lot of long driving, set that baby up, okay? Click the button, click set, and you're good to go. You pull on the clutch, cruise control turns off. You hit a brake, cruise control turns off. Then you can just click resume and take back off again, okay? Works very well. No problems with that. KYB suspension, okay? Fully adjustable. Preload, okay? Compression, dampening, okay? All there. I haven't done any settings yet. Probably gonna take it to um, a professional place to get the suspension tuned into my weight. Um, I'm 240 pounds. I have no complaints with the front end so far. It dives nicely into the corners. Good, pretty good feel, okay? Rear suspension haven't touched yet. Guy saying online that it's tuned for about 180 pounds. Not having a problem. I'm 240. I haven't touched yet. It's a little bit mushy. I'm probably gonna, you know, um, set it up a little bit differently. But as of right now, I'm riding it how it is, and it's not that bad, okay? So that's no problem right there. Let's get back to the brakes for a second. A lot of people online, eh, you know, brakes suck, you know, you need to upgrade, whatever. And at first I thought, you know what, no, the brakes are fine, don't worry about it. Um, I'm changing my mind on that. When you're coming into hard braking and you do feel, you do lose feel of the brakes a little tiny bit when, when you're hard braking, okay? Especially the rear brake, you lose a lot of feel, okay? It's very soft, very mushy, which I don't mind in the rear. But in the front, I could use a little bit more grip, a little more bite. So probably we'll do a pad upgrade um, on, the, uh, on the front brakes. Try and sort that out. 
If not, you're gonna have to upgrade to a steel braided line because there's rubber lines on here now. Okay, they're saving money from the R1. There's no steel braided lines on here. So that should help break swell, you know, getting hot. That should clear up that problem. I'm gonna try pads first. So besides that, um, finally, Yamaha upgraded to standard LEDs on all turn blinkers here. So you don't have to worry about, they don't look as bad as, you know, the rest of the old shit that was on there. Brake light looks pretty good, works good, whatever. Um, obviously I haven't got a tail tidy kit yet, haven't done anything. I, I literally just rolled this bike off the showroom floor and I put 500 miles on it, haven't touched it. So um, I'll probably get around to taking some stuff off today and um, you know, making some mods, but uh, headlights work pretty good. Um, so got this little center light right here. Looks pretty nice. Low beam, you have one light. High beam, obviously, the other one clicks on. And the difference between the FZ10 and the FZ09 is the FZ09 headlight turns with the forks. This is stationary, okay? The FZ09 um, has gotten horrible reviews online with the headlight that moves. As soon as you dive into a corner at nighttime, you can't see anything. The headlight just disappears right into the road. This is not bad, okay? Same exact headlights off the R1 projector LEDs okay they don't I ride it at night all the time not having a problem yet high beams are bright low beams pretty good so not seeing an issue with that yet all right tires Bridgestone battle axe um what are they the 21s I believe the s20 yeah s s20s or s21s whatever they are okay normally the Bridgestone Battle Axes I hate. Dunlop Qualifiers I hate too. So I normally tell you to take them off, throw them out. But so far I haven't had a problem with these tires. And that's not usual for stock tires. But I've had it, you know, going pretty good around a couple corners. And haven't had an issue yet. Pretty good grip. No slip. Um, so I'm probably going to keep them on. I'll ride them till the end of their life. And then probably go to a Pirelli or something. You know. Um... But yeah, besides that, um, no problems. Um, bike runs good. It does tend to run a little bit hot, okay, I've noticed. Especially when you're riding slow, the bike gets warm. Running around 180, 190, over 200, um, even with the fans kicking on, okay? The only time this thing runs cool is if you beat the piss out of it. For some reason, you run this bike, you're running it hard through the revs and everything, beating on it, thing runs like 165. 155 even <clears throat> excuse me but if you're putting around town it, it runs hot okay so if you're seeing some high temps if you have this bike i'm having the same uh same issues but it's not really an issue it hasn't overheated nothing like that yet so besides that everything's good rear sets okay they're not really a rear set they are a way less aggressive style of a mid, of, a, of a rear set okay they're not full fully full rear sets they're way more comfortable when you sit on it if you have your local dealer or whatever go sit on one very comfortable okay no problems there i did have my girlfriend on the back one time went for a quick ride uh very uncomfortable not only the seat but the pegs <clears throat> the passenger pegs are very very high and tight okay so not very good gotta wear loose jeans girls can't wear like you know tight ass jeans because you're not gonna get your legs high enough to get on there but besides that no problems um so i'm gonna do another video on a mod list that i want to do maybe that you guys would want to do to your bike also now uh, if you have the fc10 some some upgrades they're gonna make the bike perform better and number two it's gonna protect the bike a little bit too all right so if you like this video like subscribe hopefully i'm going to do some moto vlogging on this thing so you guys can get a feel of what it's like to ride this because it's awesome okay if you're deciding between the fz09 and the fc10 get this all day okay i had a deposit on the fz09 and i switched to the last minute and i do not regret it because this is a whole hell of a lot more machine i know it's more money and if you can swing the couple extra bucks do it because you're not going to regret it it's a whole nother animal whole nother animal 
So, um, yeah, hopefully I can get a video out to you guys soon on the upgrade list. And uh, for now, see you guys later. Keep the shiny side up.